welcome back to a chapter a day happy thursday we are moving on through the week as we see and it's a rainy day outside today but it's still a beautiful day um we just have to kind of think <laughs> some more positive thoughts to feel that beauty in the day so today we are going to be reading second samuel chapter nine mm -hmm. we saw yesterday in chapter eight how david conquered the philistines and other kings from other cities i guess who were enemies of the philistines were sending gifts to him and um what else did he do he was he reigned over all of israel and um he made his sons chief rulers they mentioned that so joab was his captain over his army as before and his sons are now the chief rulers of israel now we aren't sure who all of his sons are or we don't know any of them just yet but we will hear i think we, they mentioned their names earlier on so let's see as david is doing so well let's see how it continues so chapter nine and david said is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Matcher, the son of Amiel in Lodebar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Matcher, the son of Amiel from Lodebar. Now here's one. David is amazing. He's now king straight off over Israel, yet he's looking to honor those of Saul's household still. He is not looking to kill them. He's not looking to cast them away. He's looking to honor them for his friends, Jonathan's sake. Remember, he and Jonathan had a pact that when he becomes king, that he would um, remember his seed, you know, and honor them. And that's exactly what David is seeking to do. Mm, very honorable man he's showing himself as verse six now when mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul was come unto david he fell on his face and did reverence and david said mephibosheth and he answered behold thy servant and david said unto him fear not for i will surely show thee kindness for jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee all the land of saul thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shalt till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread all way at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Okay. So we see that David has reinstated or reinstalled the land that belonged to Saul unto Mephibosheth, his grandson. For Jonathan's sake, which was his father, because remember, David and Jonathan had a close pact. And David has called this um, servant of Saul, Ziba, to work on um, Mephibosheth's behalf. So he and his sons, they said he had 15 sons, they would work the land and or their servants would work the land and it would really be for Mephibosheth's sake, because remember, he is lame in his legs. Verse 11, Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, 
And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba was servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. That's an, a great honor David has bestowed onto Mephibosheth by allowing him to eat at the king's table. When someone was able to eat at the king's table, and I know we see these in movies, the king has a table, a long table, like in, in British scenes or those European um, kings um, movies. You see this long table with all these people all around. Those aren't, aren't all the king's relatives. They are honored people like some dukes and princes and stuff like that, that the king has seen it fit to have eat at his table as an honor. Okay, so this is what David has done for Mephibosheth. And I think David is very honorable, honestly. He doesn't have to do this, but he is remembering the pledge he made with Jonathan. So, very short chapter today, to the point shows all of this is trying to show us how it was that God was able to make that comment on David, that he was a man after his own heart. Not that David was perfect and did everything right, but David just always did what was right in God's sight for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We all have our loopholes. So that's our reading for today. Remember, keep listening because faith comes by hearing. Until, take care. Bye.